Atom has a complex structure and hence many scientists try to give a successful model of the atom and that's why there has been a variety of atomic models throughout the history of atomic physics. That refers mainly to a period from the beginning of the 19th century to the first half of 20th century. The first model of atom was given by an English scientist John Dalton called Dalton's Atomic Model. He came up with an idea that all matter is composed of very small things that are indivisible and indestructible also. He called these particles atoms. But in 1897, the electron was discovered by J.J. Thomson and after that discovery, people realized that atoms are made up of even smaller particles and Dalton's atomic model was no more valid. After a few years later in 1904, J.J. Thomson proposed another model of atom called the plum pudding model. He stated that an atom is considered as a sphere of positive charge and electrons are embedded in that sphere. But his model was not universally accepted and he himself was never able to develop a complete and stable model of his concept. After seeing the lack of confidence of Thomson in his given model, Rutherford felt that let's test the plum pudding model given by Thomson. He thought if Thomson's model is correct, then if an alpha particle is to collide with an atom, it would just fly straight through and its path will be deflected by at most a fraction of a degree. So finally, he challenged Thomson's plum pudding model with the help of a physicist, Hans Geiger, and a 20 years old undergraduate student, Ernest Marston, in 1911 by the study of the scattering of alpha particles from the seeds of metals. In Ernest Rutherford's laboratory at the University of Manchester, Geiger and Marston carried out experiments to study the scattering of alpha particles by thin metal foils. They bombarded the foils with high energy alpha particles and observed the number of scattered alpha particles as a function of angle. Based on the Thomson model of the atom, all of the alpha particles should have been found within a small fraction of a degree from the beam. But Geiger and Marsden found a few scattered alphas at angle greater than 90 degree from the beam, which is physically impossible unless they are a scattering of something more massive than themselves. This led Rutherford to deduce that the positive charge in an atom is concentrated into a small compact nucleus. Rutherford was surprised to see the result and he is often quoted, it was quite the most incredible event that ever happened to me in my life. It was almost as incredible as if you had fired a 15-inch cell into a piece of tissue paper and it come back to hit you. It was really a marvelous discovery of that time. So let's know about Rutherford scattering experiment and try to find out the distance of the nearest approach. <music> Geiger and Marsden used a narrow beam of energetic alpha particles and directed the beam on a thin gold foil of thickness around 4 micrometer. Scattered alpha particles were recorded on a zinc sulfide screen placed at some distance around the gold foils. They observed that most of the alpha particles around 98 to 99 percent are deflected at a very small angle near 0 degree and some of them were deflected off at different angles from 0 degree to 180 degree and very few of them are reflected back along their path. From the result of that experiment, Rutherford made some conclusions. His first conclusion was, most of the space within the atoms is empty. Why did he say like that? Because more than 98% of alpha particles passed through the gold file without any deflection. It means those alpha particles didn't find anything to interact and we can easily say that those spaces within the atoms are empty. The second conclusion was 
the positive charge of the atom occupies very little space inside the atom. This second conclusion came after it was observed that very few alpha particles were deflected by large angles or bounced back and it means that there must have some positively charged region that is responsible for the large deflection. And his third conclusion was all the positive charges and mass of the gold atom were concentrated in a very small volume within the atom because a very small fraction of alpha particles were deflected by 180 degree. Since alpha particles are heavy charged particles and it was observed that a very few of them were deflected by the central volume of charge which was clearly indicated that all the positive charges and mass of the gold atom are concentrated in a very small volume within the atom. And that positively charged region is now called the nucleus. Now let's see what is the distance of the nearest approach. Suppose an alpha particle directed towards the center of the nucleus. It momentarily stopped at a point from the nucleus and then retraced its path. The distance of the nearest approach is actually the minimum distance between alpha particle and center of the nucleus just before reflected back by 180 degree. Let m be the mass of an alpha particle, v be the velocity with which it approaches the nucleus and d is the distance of closest approach. Then kinetic energy of the alpha particle is given by E equal to half mv square. Since there is no external and non-conservative force acting on the system of the alpha particle and the nucleus, so the mechanical energy of the system will be conserved. And hence, as the alpha particle approaches the nucleus, its kinetic energy decreases and gradually being converted into electrostatic potential energy. At the point of nearest approach, the kinetic energy of the alpha particle is fully converted into electrostatic potential energy due to Coulomb's force of repulsion of the nucleus on that alpha particle. That is E equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught times 2E times GE upon D. This implies that half mv square equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught times 2E times GE upon D and it gives you the value of D equal to GE square by pi epsilon naught mv square. In this episode of nuclear physics, we talked about the Rutherford scattering experiment and derived a formula for the distance of the nearest approach. If this lesson is really helpful to you, then do like, comment and share out this video. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, then subscribe to our channel now and press the bell icon also. Thank you.